What's up Bikerware fans? Tyler and I'm here with the all new Ripley AF. This is the alloy version of their carbon Ripley which is their kind of like long travel XC bike and so before we go out here and get this thing a little bit muddy let's take a close-up look at some of the details while it's all shiny. One quick note about the bike you're seeing here. This is not a stock build. We received a frame set to review and built this up with parts we're testing separately. Check out the full review on bikerware.com for more details about this build. For an alloy bike, the Ripley AF is quite shapely. Many of the welds are smoothed for a sleeker appearance. All cables and hoses run inside the frame with bolt-on ports to capture the lines and keep them tight so they won't rattle inside the down tube. They exit at the bottom, then run externally to the rear brake, but internally through the drive side chainstay to the rear derailleur. The dropper post cable pops out here too, then goes into another port on the seat tube to control a stealth dropper seat post. The Ripley AF shares the same DW link suspension as the carbon version, and the same 120mm of rear wheel travel, and both are paired with the 134. The big difference here is the AF's head angle gets 1 degree slacker at 65.5 degrees. The suspension uses two sets of links to control the rear axle's path, and a separate yoke to drive the rear shock. They're rotating on a mix of IGUS bushings and sealed cartridge bearings, and all use easily accessible Allen bolts should you need to service them. It's a lot of moving parts, but it's a proven design that somehow also maintains a very short 432mm chainstay length. Not shown here, all production bikes will ship with additional frame protection on the down tube, chainstays, and lower link. Like most modern mountain bikes, it's one by only, and it's a 29er. Alright, let's get it dirty. In cycling, as we all know all too well, what goes down must first climb up. Fortunately, the Ripley AF's DW Link suspension is wickedly efficient. I didn't feel like I was wasting any effort when seated and chugging along up the inclines. I got the full advantage of letting the suspension do its job over the roots, even while laying down the power. There's a bit of bob when standing up and stomping, but I get that on any full suspension bike. Basically, I just left the shock wide open to maximize traction and it worked perfectly fine, with the added bonus of not forgetting to switch it back on for the descents. And oh, the descents. The suspension soaks up those bumps very well, and the short rear end with slacker head angle made the bike easy to balance up, over, down, and around our trail's tight, twisty loops. Little jumps and drops are managed well too. I definitely used all the travel here, likely with the rear shock set just a bit on the soft side, but it never felt harsh, just controlled. I had the rebound set two clicks faster than its middle setting, which kept it from getting bogged down or springing back too quickly. It felt well supported through the berms too. Obviously your settings are going to dictate how it performs for you, but the point is it was really easy to get a sweet spot that worked on fast sweepers, tight turns, power climbs, and rough descents. Basically, with the Ripley AF, I just took an incredibly good bike and made it more affordable. Yes, the frame is a couple pounds heavier than the carbon Ripley, but it's more than a thousand dollars less expensive too. If you're looking for a very capable short travel trail bike that's fun and fast and affordable, this one's worth a look. So those are the first impressions for the new Ripley AF and check out the post on bikerumor.com for the full story with more images, specs, weights, and everything else that you need to know if you're looking at a killer alloy trail bike. Thanks again for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Oh, that hurt my elbow. <laughs>